Welcome back to the part for me for podcast number 739, the Austrian Grand Prix Review. This is Todd. No, Todd, not now. A.K.A. Negative Camber. You know what we do on a race review weekend. We watch one, then we talk about it. Then we watch one, then we talk about it. Come on, Todd. That's exactly what we do. But before reviewing the Austrian Grand Prix, I have to introduce my co-host, which of course means... Wrecked from out of the wasteland. He's bad, he's beautiful, he's crazy, it's... Hello, everybody, this is Paul Charles, the, the International. Paul, welcome back. You know, you went up to the Glen, you got a podium, you hang around a week, come rocking back up, boom! What you know about rolling down There he the is, man, another podium. Down. Yeah, yes. well done. Thank you, thank you. You were out there yes. beating and chasing and racing that effervescent Jeff Westfall. Yes, yes, he was chasing <laughs> us this time. So yeah, that that's good. great. Was yeah. it so Roman and Ross, right? That's who you Roman had in the car. Ross. Yep, yep. Because we had the six hour, and Ian was in for the six hour, and then we're back to our normal pairing with Ross and Roman for the uh, the yeah the shorter sprint race, part of the Sprint Cup Championship. So. Yeah, you um, guys are a points leader, huh? We are the points leaders, yes. It's awesome. I know, I know. Isn't it crazy? It is. It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah I thought fun. I thought I thought your buddy Calvin there, he was he was uh offering a few platitudes uh, to the team and was saying uh, you know, he, how Ian said bringing in Turner, helping with setup was mm -hmm. was good and you know, you guys are building a good data notebook and yeah and uh and getting ahead around the car now. So it's yeah the car right now the car's a lot better from the beginning you know mm -hmm. so because that data bank you, you can't you can't you can't force that you have to just keep going and trying different things so yeah 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 so it's fun it's fun to be a part of that whole thing that's awesome mm -hmm. great result and and i happen to know that you were on a 20 hour journey just yes. trying to get home the brutality of flying nowadays is oh my god i've never That's seen terrible. anything like it yeah it's, it's just terrible. nuts yeah getting crew to and from the races is proven to be extremely problematic so drive don't fly if you can that's yeah, all i'm saying go. let this do the, let's try to figure this thing out before everyone starts <laughs> jumping on planes uh, crazy it's terrible well, that's uh, while you were up there getting a podium uh, in t in the wilds of New York, um, there was a Grand Prix in Austria. Oh, was that? Oh, nice. Uh -huh. yeah, okay, yeah. that's yeah, beautiful uh, area too. Yeah. It's like a postcard over there, Austria. Yeah, Austria is a very yeah. Say Watkins Glen area is a very beautiful place too. So. It is. It is indeed. It's yeah. yeah, it's very nice. So I thought we'd talk about the Austrian Grand Prix okay. on podcast 739 and all of its exciting glory. Uh, but before we get into talking about the teams as they finish, let's get into the big talking points that came out of this weekend that has lots of chins wagging, lots of tongues wagging, a lot of rag chewing over mm. this whole issue of penalties and outside passes and license and points off license the reality of it is and i'm not trying to be con controversial here i'm not trying to start what you would call in your native tongue paul a controversy yes i am um uh, i'm just gonna throw this out there i'm not trying to be that guy but if memory serves correct it always seems like when derek warwick is a guest steward there's always like a lot of penalty stuff going on. I and think you're right, actually. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and somebody check me on that. But I, I, I'm i telling you, every time I hear that Derek Warwick is the, the steward, I feel like we, on that weekend, all of a sudden, we're picking fly poop out of pepper, you know? Yeah, yeah. We need to get Nelson Piquet as a steward, and then yeah. there will be no penalties, although we won't be, be a couple of lawsuits. <laughs> yeah, but, right. But yeah. Right. I just right. remember Derek, Derek is a driver. I see him race Formula 3 and stuff. He was a pretty yeah. clean, neat driver. But it does seem like being the driver steward, you would think he would lean more towards openness of driving antics on track, understanding what it's like and where you are and what the consequences are. Yeah, um, I kind of feel he like... seems to be the other way, yeah. Yeah, and in the past, he certainly has been all about scrapping the blue flag rules and letting them race. And he certainly had those comments. I, I can think of... 
2015, reading some comments uh, about that. And you would think that he would be, but it just seems like, you know, he felt like, well, you know, they're not, uh, they're not calling this enough. And, and I was kind of like, uh, I don't know. So let's talk about it. He had eight drivers, 11 drivers total hold to the FIA after this race. I mean, it's like, really? And so eight drivers got penalties out of this. Now, mm-hmm. I, I want to talk about the non-passing penalties first. Okay, let's go for it. You had Vettel for impeding Fernando and Quali. Okay. Mm-hmm. You had enough. Giovinazzo for overtaking during the safety car. Seems oh, pretty see. straightforward, right? Yeah. Uh, then you had Lando for the forcing Perez off the track. You had Perez forcing Claire off track. We'll get into those in a minute. <laughs> yeah. You had Yuki crossing the white line at pit entry twice. You had yeah. Kimi causing a collision, punting Vettel. That was bad. You had Latifi not respecting double yellows, and you had Mazapan uh, not respecting uh, double yellows. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> not respecting the sport or people in general. <laughs> That's strange. I wonder what's causing all the accidents. Exactly. Yes. So you've got all this going. I want to talk about the non-passing first. To be fair, Paul, the FIA, for as long as I can remember, have always taken that white line at pit entry and pit exit Mm -hmm. damned seriously, as they should. Right. So that doesn't surprise me for Yuki. Um, And and I remember us talking... um, Oh, this has been a few years ago when you were still at Sonoma and okay. we were talking about that white line and pit exit mm. and how critical, you know, those, those pit right. entry and pit exits are to safety mm-hmm. and, and why, you know, I can remember in past, remember the nineties, I remember Schumacher touching a white line with a tire and getting a penalty, yep. you know, I mean, they don't mess around with it and they never right. have, yep. you know? So I understand that on Yuki and when you do yeah. it twice, eh, yeah, it's pretty know. Bad on him. <laughs> yeah, bad on him. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he learned his lesson. Yeah. I mean, uh, what what happens there is if if you get below the white line, it, it obviously hinders your speed through that turn eight, is it, or turn nine? I can't remember that yeah. first first letter. Yeah. So he's he's just it was not very good of Yuki. No. Yeah. It's sloppy. Uh, Kimi causing a collision. I could see that. No, it's um, kind of sloppy, also. That was kind of sloppy. And uh, look, not respecting and slowing down to double yellows. You know. That's kind of a big deal. It uh, is a big deal. I, mean, I, I get it because I'm sure it's frustrating in the end, especially around a track as yeah. short as um, Austria is. You know, just like you're right. constantly just out getting out of the way. You know. But, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure that's uh, and overtaking during a safety car. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, right. So I under and impeding uh, Fernando and Quali for Vettel. I understand that they'd given the rule that nine and 10, they couldn't be backing everybody up to get mm-hmm. space. And yet they were. And so that's all frustrating as weird that, that they said, yeah, well, there was like three or four cars all backing up at that time, but Vettel was the first one and he was clearly wrong. It's like, well, if there were three or four cars, then all of them should get penalties. Why pick yeah. on Zeb alone? You know? Um, Cause it was a concertina effect in that case. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, all right. So those are the non-passing. So, mm-hmm. All of those get, you know, and so you have all these penalties and you're taking points off the license. And now everybody's talking about these point system on the license and how mm-hmm. that needs to be fixed because you got Lando now that's only got two points left. And he's a race band and all that. But let's talk about the passing. I thought this was uh, really kind of the biggest conversation coming out of this weekend was the outside pass. You had Lando versus Perez. Uh, where Lando uh, pushed Perez out wide into the gravel. Uh, he gets a penalty 20 laps later. It took him 20 laps to give that penalty out. Uh, you can't imagine, gosh, that, that wouldn't affect strategy, would it? Um, <laughs> and then you yeah. have Perez versus Leclerc twice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in short, Michael Massey said the stewards felt that all three car- cases uh, a car's width should have been left. Um, well, that's been the recent notion. I'm curious if this is much easier said than done. As, and, and so you and I were talking about this before the podcast. So yeah. for our listeners I, and, and viewers, I want to try to explain what I'm thinking here. It's if you and I were going into a corner and you came rocking up on the outside of me, and mm-hmm. we went into that corner and I've already gone through the braking zone and I'm letting off the brake to make the apex, is it a lot easier to say, oh, well, there's Paul. All of a sudden, I've got to change and make a much shallower entry, you know, 
and depending on how much rolling speed I have through that corner, you know, I could, if I'm trying to turn more, I'm doing a Masa, I could have mm -hmm. oversteer or understeer, right? Mm -hmm. If I turn more, I could lose the back end. And trying to now change the trajectory of how I'm going through that corner on the racing line, because you're there, seems difficult to do. In my yep. mind, I'm not a professional driver. That seems easier to say than to do. Um, to that point, is it realistic to think that magically you come flying up outside I, and I, as I'm going through a corner that I can just magically change my trajectory through a corner? Given the speed I'm at, the car, the traction, the grip levels, everything, aero, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, I can't jam on the brakes more and give you more space and turn sharper into that corner. So I wanted to ask you as a professional driver, is that realistic or is that basically saying, well, if anyone comes up on the outside of you, you're pretty much going to have to give a car away and concede the corner. Yeah. Or does it change if you're on the inside and you're there and I see you, I've got to give you a room at the apex, or is it a case of, it depends on when you're there. If you're there at the entry of the corner versus if you're only there coming out of the exit of the corner, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different elements at play here. It's easy to say, I've seen a lot of journalists say, well, if you're brave enough to try to make an outside pass, you got to realize it's a low percentage pass and you're oftentimes going to come out on the losing end of that. Is right. that fair? Yeah. With, <laughs> which one do I answer here? I know uh, there's a lot, right? Right, right. So, so let's just go back to the basic of going driving to a corner, right? So, if you're a Formula One driver or any other decent racing driver, whenever you turn into a corner, you're on the limit. You should be on the limit of your car, and taking the ultimate line through the corner. If you do, if you're on that limit, the car limit, and you do something different, like if you lift off the power, you know, if you turn the mm -hmm. wheel more then you're going to unbalance the car and could potentially spin. Think of all these, look back to all the Vettelisms we mm -hmm. saw, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of that was due to Vettel getting off the power to give someone enough room. And that, then that transfers load to the front, becomes a pivot point, the back end comes around, and he spins around, right? right? You don't want to be that guy, right? Right. Um, but, but it really does depend on where in the corner this person shows themselves. If they show themselves in the first third of a corner, certainly in this four or five um, segment, you are now basically where they ran off the road was when the Vic was back under power. It wasn't under braking, right? It was basically mm -hmm. under power and your track, you would normally track out to use all the road you can to maximize the radius of the corner. Do you have to at that point? No, you don't. Um, can you choose to not give as much throttle and so therefore you can have a tighter line on the exit to give room yes you can could lando have done it yes um could perez have done it uh, uh could leclerc have done it yes right in those first two incidents i believe um do they have the right to the corner you know it's it's racing right um and i'm not gonna sit here and say well they should have just given room because honestly in my racing career I would say 90% of the time I wouldn't give people that room um, on the outs if, if they're trying to pass me on the outside because you just unwind the wheel and 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 they you can choose to back off mm -hmm. you know and and tuck in behind me or you can choose to go off the road and that was usually the options I gave people <laughs> they didn't like either one usually right, right. Um, but in with open wheel cars it's a little bit different because obviously I drove touring cars and open wheel cars is a bit more treacherous to yeah. You're banging with people if you start making those fights so you've got to be a bit more careful there um i definitely don't so should it be penalized that's my question not not that did lando have an option because I, I think he did and i think charles had an option too but should you be penalized for getting your elbows out and fighting for your position you know if, if yeah. we saw some other corners where there was runoff right mm -hmm. and someone ran everyone out uh, i think was it perez ran out there there's a few times we saw in turn one guys were forced out there and ran out there yes and there was no penalties for that right 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 the penalty here is because of the corner and what the outcome was yeah you can't penalize that person outcomes out. you right? cannot penalize so, outcomes so if you force someone off it should be all all, all all the same no matter what whether it's 
a white lion and tarmac or it's grass or it's gravel really yeah, right. so i think they're inconsistent so they they basically penalized on the outcome of um running out on the road um I, you know i i feel like you know unless it's something egregious um these guys should be able to you know fight for their right to party and for them to sort it out amongst themselves um you, you know we've talked endlessly about eliminating penalties because penalties you know just kill races and no one wants to be driving around having to serve penalties all, all race long um so I, I think you need to um have a balance there and now, now what are we looking at the, on the other side what are we looking at is can no one now make an outside pass because if they try it then every driver has the right just to run them off into the into the into the gravel we, right. i, I want to you... see people fighting for, i want to see good passes i want to see good attempts but if every time someone makes a decent attempt and we know how difficult it is to pass now and not in the drs zone you know no one's going to make those attempts anymore because um you know they know they're going to get run off the road and and basically they're, they're just going to lose out so the a little bit of fine line pass. because if yeah. if you're saying every time you go out outside the the person on the inside can just punch you out yeah. wide okay that's understandable on the converse side of that argument if every time someone comes up the outside of you you've got to mm -hmm. radically change your line instantly mm -hmm. inside and on the exit of a corner you're basically conceding the position every yeah, single time perhaps but 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 there there is good racing where there's good side by sides to one two three mm -hmm. corners there's a way to play you know in that scenario yeah. i mean we we certainly don't see an indy car at 250 miles an hour someone running someone all the way up into the into the wall right because right. they're trying an outside pass because the peril is very high yeah, right? Right, so, right, right. so it's 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 a i'm finding it difficult for me to say whether the penalty was right or, or not um or everyone are you blaming perez for trying an outside pass i i personally thought perez showed himself early enough in the corner that lando should have given him the room yeah because he had earned the right to be there because he had made the outside pass so early in the corner if you're doing it really late in the corner and lando's there and he's all loaded up and he's just tracking out and all of a sudden perez goes like this in the last third of the corner then yeah no perez has no right to be there you've got to show yourself early um and the other person has to have a bit more respect for you dicing and not just say well what's he thinking um you know passing on the outside there he's thinking he's trying to race you yeah. you know yeah, honestly right. he's so, trying to pass <laughs> so i i don't necessarily love the fact that lando's got a penalty but i also don't love the fact that everyone's thinks lando had the right to do it because i don't think did. Yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting conversation in the sense that there's all these different permutations and look at it. But if you just go back a year and a year before that with uh, Lewis and Albon, mm -hmm. Lewis punted Albon twice, you know, right, right. Now, it was interesting conversation back then because you had all these people on social media, <clears throat> excuse me, all these people on social media saying, well, no, I mean, you know, look, Albon had a choice. You could either get hit run out off into the gravel or back out of it and he should have backed out of it yeah well that's a whole different conversation now isn't it yeah yeah why right. was it a couple of years ago or you know it, it, with these situations a couple of years ago it was perfectly well if you're going to go on the outside it's a low percentage chance anyway you yeah. always got to realize you know you're going to have to back out you know yeah. and and you know lewis had the line it's his corner yeah. and they could have just backed out and it, and it is a you know going into passes like that you know it's a low percentage and you can't and you you know you're hopeful you're going to pull it off right that's what i'm saying yep. if i ever if i ever did something like that i i showed myself super super early because yeah. if you from the apex out you've got no right to be there but if right. you do get you know then and you judge who you're racing against whether you try it or not you right. know, there's certain people you would right. never try that with because you know they're just gonna take you out there's certain other people that go okay you know you, you got the better of me there or i'll just get you back at the you know later on in the in the lap or later on in the race or something like, right. like that so it, it really depends on who you're racing against now for the third incident i i actually thought perez was trying to give charles room that there was an impressive move by charles for sure and i think charles deserved to be on the outside there and i think i think 
Perez was trying to give him enough room, but no more than enough room and got it a little bit wrong. And as you see, he got a little bit crossed up or whatever. Um, but I really think the third one was different from the first two. Yeah, I, I agree. It seems like to me, and I don't know if he had some, if he lost a back end and had mm -hmm. to, to quickly adjust. I mean, yeah. it, on the onboard looked like he was steering right into Leclerc. That's not what he was doing. It's either the back end came around no, for and sure he lost did, grip, yeah. or they may have touched a little bit and he was trying to keep it. You know, yeah, I, I uh, think by the time the, the 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 moment happened there, I think it was already too late. I think Charles was already heading yeah. off, but um, he was. I I think Perez was aware he was there, and I think he was trying to give him room the se second time. But I think because of the history of this race yeah, right. and Perez in this race, they were just like, I'll give him another penalty. He's doing it again. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. as I said, I, I think I think we want to see good racing. We want to see good side by side. We don't want it to be if someone goes outside of you, they instantly just get shoved off the track. Um, but there's also a, some that say for, as you said, that the person on the inside still has a right to battle and not make it easy, you know, and um, elbows out, as I say, but you just, yeah, it's. Yeah, I just, I wanted to try to argue a couple different sides of this. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to be on the fence, but but I do want to, you know, it's, it's I think this issue is uh, a lot easier said than done on, mm -hmm. on just, oh, they just need to fix that real quick. It is a little difficult. It's about the time, how much of your car is alongside, when right. you present, um, mm -hmm. how you go into there. You know, I certainly wouldn't expect to come and make a diving um, uh, move on the outside and you're only like, you know, three quarters of a way up and all of a sudden you're supposed to concede the corner, you know, right. that's, but to your point, he was early, he was in, he was fully alongside, he's there, mm -hmm. you know, he's there. Um, do you give a little room? That's the intent, I think. Right. So, you know, and, and is it fair to say, well, anytime you try to pass on outside, you got to realize you're probably going to lose. So it is what it is. So uh, I don't know. Is that, fair either you know yeah i don't think so, that's what we want to see i think no i think we want to see people try to make an outside pass if it's done properly and it, yeah and see people racing for the position that way yeah. yeah right right um okay let's talk about the teams first up red bull max for stopping p1 sergio perez p6 max got his first grand slam paul with pole position led every lap won the race fast lap had the whole thing summed and he did so in dominant fashion sure I'm going to share a little kitty math with you. I did on this super, super expensive calculator Ooh. that I got at Walgreens. Hi, huh? isn't that a jewel? Look Did at that. Do you have to put batteries on that, or is that one of those newfangled? Yeah, Paul, um, it's a Wexford. You know, wow. that's, that's in there a place mm. where you're from called Wexford. So there you go. I'm sure there's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, my kitty math tells me that. Uh, uh, by the end, uh, Ma uh, Max was ahead of Valtteri Bottas by 17, 18 seconds over 71 laps. That puts it at a 0.239-ish uh, se seconds per lap mm -hmm. uh, advantage. And uh, that does comport with what Lewis said about Red Bull being 0.25 seconds uh, a lap quicker. Um, so, yes, that's stupid math, and that's math for idiots. But, you know, hey, sounded good to me. Uh, but bottom line is Max, uh, it just, he said the car was absolutely hooked up both sets of tires. Didn't matter what compound absolutely yeah. hooked up. Drove yeah. I was, ring. I was noticing something in, and I did see not all the qualifying, but I did see Max's lap. Yeah. And you know, when, in Monaco, we were going through the swimming pool and you see the downforce uh -huh. to the left and right. Well, if you look, go on board and look in so this turn seven is it seven eight or is it six seven it's the long left with the quick right yeah is it six onto, seven maybe onto, yeah 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 but you looking at that car and its stability it's front and rear balance but the immense amount of grip it had through that mm -hmm. turn six that first segment was mind-blowing to me i mean you <laughs> just saw just that just in i said it's it's a balance of overall grip but the bounce on the front and the rear end the front tires were just dug into the ground you know and and but the back end was also we couldn't see it but i could see the front tires i'm like holy cow that thing is just unbelievably hooked up so yeah go back watch his watch his lap and see that corner that corner was like one of the ones that i think you can visually see all the downforce and grip working right there in that moment yeah 
And it's worth, because I know you were racing this weekend, if you get a chance to go back and look at Karun and Landra Norris talk about his qualifying lap at the at the Skypad, yeah. definitely go watch that. Okay. It, it, it's great. And Lando didn't mince any words. He just pretty much, you know, said what he thought about the corner and they went on his lap because Lando was ahead of Max the entire lap until the last corner. Right. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. And and I love the way that uh, Lando was explaining how his approach to it and how he mm. was doing corners and what Max was doing. It was it was a really interesting session. Cool. Really enjoyed it. Um, okay, next up, uh, Sergio Perez. You like my face? You like it? Mm. Oh, I'm not so sure about Don't that. Don't know. Well, he mm. had a harder day. It was his 200th race ball for the Mexican. Ooh. It was a bit of a ragged race, first trying to overtake yeah. Lando on the outside. And if there's one thing we know about the youngsters, Paul, <laughs> Leclerc, Lando, George, Esteban, etc., they don't just fold like a cheap tent. You know, right. uh, those guys are all pretty darned aggressive and they tend to be quite punchy when push comes to shove. So that move was always going to be perhaps a low percentage chance against Lando. Uh, Sergio, perhaps thinking uh, that this kind of pushing and shoving was OK because it took him 20 laps to give out a penalty for that. He returned the favor to Charles Leclerc. Charles was none too happy about the Mexicans hard elbows at that point. <laughs> yes. He was F bombing and everything else and not happy. But in fairness to Sergio, Sergio said he was not pleased with himself and his own actions. And he was uh, uh, he was apologetic. He Against apologized. Leclerc, for... The Leclerc passes. Yes. Oh, the Leclerc instance. He's, yes, think... he was. He was I don't think he apologized happy. for uh, the Lando thing. No, no, he probably wasn't happy about that one. But for <laughs> his... Uh, his actions against uh, Leclerc, yes, he was not uh, pleased with himself. Uh, got a couple penalties, and uh, for the one incident, it like it like we said, it did appear that the that the rear had caused either that had that you know maybe they touched and he had that had to yeah. You know, As I said, I, I think it you know just that moment alone shows you he was kind of still trying to he was trying yeah her, I yeah. think he was. Uh, but Red Bull, nonetheless, come out of this weekend, two weekends on the trot, winning big points haul. They're 44 points ahead of Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship um, and 32 points uh, clear of Lewis. Max is 32 points clear of Lewis and the driver's title. So we've got a definite race on our hands yeah. as we head into Silverstone. That's for sure uh, for Red Bull. Um Anything more to add to Sergio? No, I think we kind of talked. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. ragged. He was off his game, I think, um, yeah. after that first incident. You know, um, yeah. he looked really good. That if we made that move work, you know, it would have been a one-two Red Bull, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, instead, because it didn't work, you know, it, it, he had a he had a rough race the rest yeah, of the way for sure. Yeah. Mercedes Lewis Hamilton P4 Valtteri Bottas and P2 at first blush Paul you might have thought that the day might not look too bad for Mercedes when Sergio skipped off the track and through the gravel thinking hey well, okay so it may be Max Lewis and Bottas but Lewis began losing time due to what the team said was damage from the sausage curbs with Toto saying that it was up to 30 points of arrow loss due mm. to the sausage curves um so all of a sudden now you've got lewis who became a bit of a bottleneck for botus and the finn was let past lewis uh but, but lewis couldn't hold off norris either and he stopped again late for new tires to maybe try to get that fastest lap he couldn't get it either uh benny so he ended up down in fourth so the damage maybe to that car a little more severe than what we thought and which led social media to get all a light and a flame over the sausage curves. But surely, Paul, that's the same for everyone, right? It is the same for everyone. And, I, and we're still searching for the right way to keep these track limits in check, right? I mean, yeah. you know, you got, as we saw in with the incident with Sergio and Leclerc, you know, if you got gravel out there, you know, it makes a mess and the guy, and the guy loop that's actually pretty good. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he, he didn't damage his car, but he sure lost a lot of time. And I, I've always said there just has to be consequences to going out out of limits. But the damaging your car, I'm not sure that's what I'm looking for. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah, it yeah. seems very, I don't know, very 1980s to throw a big <laughs> pile of concrete out there, you know, to drive over. 
Yeah. Um, well, and it's every I mean, track has its own different ways of doing it. So we don't have yeah. a consistent way to police the track limits. You know, we've got Paul Ricard where you can drive forever, you know, uh -huh. and you just have to drive, you know, do do three, three circles on around a pylon and go again and you're good, you know, <laughs> right. and then we've got the extremes here is if you go all over that line, um, rip you your damage front your wing car. Off. but you know, in, I, I like that better than, you know, obviously we, we always say that rule, if it's Monaco, it's a, it's a wall, right? And a no. Monaco, no one hit the wall, right? No. So there's a way of keeping your car within the limits. It's just how much peril out there are you willing to risk against? So if you go out there and you know that's the peril, then I guess, you, you know, you deserve what you get, I suppose. Well, it was interesting in that uh, lap review with Karun, Lando was talking about those curbs and he was talking about how at certain turns, yeah, you use those curbs. Mm -hmm. He's using them to keep his car right. in. It catches, in. You. Right. It catches the car. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're all using it's not just Lando, Lewis right. would have been doing it too. All of yeah. them would have been, but then once you break that, but if you get a yeah. little wrong and mm -hmm. you get over it, all of a sudden that's you pay for it, and it's unfortunate mm -hmm. because because you're right. I mean, the last thing I want to see is Lewis trying to go for a race win, and and you know, so he's off a little bit on a curb, and then all of a sudden it, it destroys the bottom of his car. You don't want to see that either, but on the flip side, if you know it's going to destroy your car, then you got to stay off of them, you yeah. Know? Right. Just like the wall of Monaco, right? right? Just like the wall of Monaco, yeah. yeah. So that's difficult. He ends up down in P4, um, and uh, but he did make the comment uh, that Lando's a damn good driver. He said that over the radio during the race. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's high praise coming from a seven-time champion. Um, for Valtteri, he had a better day with a decent qualifying, better race at one point when the team told him to hold station. I was wondering <laughs> if he would actually do that <laughs> for Lewis. Uh, but ultimately, I think the team thought better of it, Lewis having a damaged his car a little bit a little bit off the pace uh they let him pass lewis uh to claim second place toto made a decent point saying that the team's ultimate pace may not be as bad as it appeared as they were stuck behind lando for a good portion of the beginning of the race and that cost them a lot of time trying to get back around lando uh toto said that the team could see improvement in the race pace from last weekend so they're making progress but they do need to get their act together yeah i think i mean both has was the only reason Botas was allowed to pass Lewis was because of Lando. Yes. Under threat from Lando from behind. Otherwise, I'm sure they would have helped been able to hold, they would hold station. Yeah. But like they so. knew that Botas was going to get, you know, Lando was catching, catching. So they had to release him. So yeah. lucky for Valtteri, kind of, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, with the damage to Lewis's car, it's, it's hard to gauge the pace of what ultimately was there. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't think it was anything different than what we were expecting going in anyway. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I, I just don't, I think both has kind of showed the pace, but I think the Red Bull was superior and, and Mercedes had nothing for him. And, you know, for both has to get a second Lewis to get a fourth, probably, you know, they had hoped for a, at least a second, a third, not too bad yeah. and damage, uh, limitation before they get to some circuits that, Hopefully they'll be able to show, you know, be, be ahead of the Red Bull and get claw some of those points back. Right, right. Uh, let's talk about uh, McLaren. Nice, Ron. Um, you got Lando Norris down in P3, uh, Daniel Ricciardo in P7. Lando had another terrific race. Uh, made the most uh, out of their straight line speed they had, which was really uh, pretty impressive um, on balance. If you look at all those DRS attempts that Lewis was trying to set him up. Uh, struggling to get around that McLaren. So very impressive at the Red Bull ring on top, straight line speed. Uh, he fought the, but you know, even though he got past Paul, he fought the top teams all day long. When he radioed early on asking, well, how, okay, how hard do you want me to, to try to fight the Mercedes and keep him behind? I was glad that the team didn't tell him to fold like a cheap tent. You know, like he hung week. in there. Yeah. Yes, right. I'm glad that they kind of let him run because that, in my mind, secured a podium. And yeah. uh, and he was there or thereabouts all day long. Um, I got to tell you, just as a Yankee on this side of the pond, reading just the outpouring of social media praise and everything going on around what Lando did this weekend, add that to what he's done so far all year long. I got to tell you, the buzz the press i i think the uk has a new hero to cheer for in mm -hmm. lando much maybe to george and lewis's chagrin 
Um, and despite some of the press saying, oh, this is really encouraging from Lando. This is, this is uh, really good news for what we might see in the future. I got news for you, folks. He's Lando, <laughs> yeah. George, Max, Charles, Carlos, Esteban, Pierre, they're here now. Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't, you know, Lando is not a glimpse of what he might develop to in the future. Lando is sending it. Yeah, he just needs the tool to send it in. And McLaren, yep. luckily, you know, for him, I mean, good for Zach to tie, tie Lando mm. up because he's he's definitely showing uh, his speed now that they – and McLaren are backing up that speed by giving him a good car. Not necessarily every race, but yeah, um, this – it was a spectacular drive from him and from, you know, and once – you can never forget the team have to give him the car to do it with, right? I think he's he's been a pretty – darn good driver since the day he came into formula one yeah and he's definitely matured which you know you can't you can't rush that um right. but I, I love i love hearing him in the car because he's very calm <laughs> he is you know you know i mean he's literally chatting like he is on his twitch account when he's in the car <laughs> which means he's kind of means he's within yeah. himself he's getting the most out yeah. of the car but he's not panning for breath doing it um yeah, I, I mean, like it because he's getting cheeky. He's cheeky too. And they yeah. said, "Well, you got a penalty." He said, "For what?" For he said, "Well, Perez." He goes, "Well, he was on the outside. That was stupid move. That was never yeah. going to work." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So whatever, whatever, said, whatever. Yeah, Lost it whatever. off. But yeah, yeah, but and then you have to look at his teammate. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. Ricardo is n- not any slouch, and I think mm-hmm. Ricardo is going to come back. And he's just struggling some for some reason with this car in 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 this new first year with McLaren, but. um there's no doubt that um, Norris is one of those top guys that's going to be here for a long time. And luckily for McLaren, he signed up to drive for them. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I would yeah. think that George Orlando in, in one of those Mercedes would be a lethal weapon, mm-hmm. either one of them. Um, but Lando is here. That's not a – I was reading that article and said, oh, you know, it's a really good sign for the future. I'm like, no, that, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's yeah. here. He's now. You yep. know, it's his, he's been in Formula One a couple of years. He's cut his teeth. He's already done the silly stuff. He's here now and he's ready to roll. And, uh, and conversely, so is George, to be fair. Um, yep. uh, let's talk about Dan. Dan turned to poor qualifying around, gained several places to start. Dan fought hard during the race. While he couldn't hold off Perez or Sainz, uh, Sainz was on much fresher tires and he just couldn't hold them off. He did manage to keep Leclerc behind him. That's important in their battle with Ferrari and keeps Ferrari or keeps McLaren, I'm sorry, ahead of Ferrari by 19 points in the Constructors' Mm. Championship. Good to see, Dan. um, Look, if qualifying is still a struggle, good to see the race pace is there, still putting in some good moves, uh, and seems, I would say, on balance, seem to really make some progression uh, this weekend, and let's hope that continues. Yeah, yeah, the qualifying is just putting him on his back foot every time, Mm -hmm. and I think he maximized what he could do, because to get that far up in places, you've got to do something different. You got to use that car up in certain aspects just to get that far up in the places. Yeah. So he just didn't have any a knife left to fight with at the end. But he did manage to hold off Leclerc, who was also kind of doing nearly the same thing. It seemed. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's just got to get somehow get there first thing on Friday and and be in tune with that car because it does seem to ebb and flow a little bit. And so he's inconsistent. Sometimes he feels like he's there, sometimes not. So it's hard to judge progress, right? Yeah, so, it is. Because yeah. it's not like every race is kind of edging up because sometimes he's dropping down too. So yeah. um, it's it's an all, all round getting his head around the car and how it works at every different type of track and how the setup right. needs to be and how he needs to drive it. Lando's got that experience and he's showing you know, that the car can be there, but Ricardo just needs to unlock that little secret. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ferrari, Charles Leclerc, P8, Carlos Sainz in P5. After a poor qualifying performance again, it was another decent recovery, and this would suggest that maybe Ferrari's race pace is certainly better than their qualifying pace, or at least at this track it has been. Carlos started on the heart compounds, and this was probably the better of the two options for them, and he was able to, to make hay with that. Uh, with the much fresher tires as they did a long stint had fresh tires at the end uh, he was able to get back up get around dan and uh, he inherited fifth when perez was penalized so a good result uh, really for carlos two times on the trot a good run up to fifth yeah it it seems to be talking about consistency yeah it seems to be always the case with carlos right he just can't the last third of the race it all kind of comes together and his his carlos he's 
knocking people down. He's, he's moving up the places right at the end. Yeah. Um, it seems like Ferrari running these split strategies the whole time, but uh, science seems to be able to make it work a bit better, or maybe that kind of strategy just works with how he drives, but mm -hmm. he's kind of like very low key. And then the last third, it just, it, it's like, yeah. where's Carlos Sainz come from? And there he comes, you know, charging <laughs> know. the front. Yeah. It is interesting about Carlos. I, you know, Carlos is delivering, he's gelled, he's, you know, he's a hell of a race car driver. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes it's easy to overlook if he's got a quiet race, you know, mm -hmm. but what he's doing there, if you look at those split strategies, it always looks like not taking anything away from Charles, but it always looks like Charles trying to pull that strategy out of his ass. Yeah, <laughs> and sure, Carlos sure. is yeah. just executing it, you know? So, and yeah. I'm not saying that Carlos always gets like a better strategy or anything, because it's hard to know which is going to be the better, but, mm -hmm. but man, you know, what both of them are executing in Carlos's case and just quietly marching up the field and what Charles is doing to just sheer talent and, yeah. and just pace. Mr. Excitement. We Mr. Need to excitement. Call yeah. yeah is is just impressive you know charles yeah. had a tougher day uh, than uh, carlos and certainly getting beaten up twice by perez that didn't help uh, yeah. got punted twice off the track still managed to get up to eighth um and you know he was upset he had every right to be he thought he could have got got a lot higher had he not had those incidents i'd agree mm -hmm. with him um yep uh, but in the end, he said that he and Perez talked, they cleared the air. He understood it's a, it's a racing deal, but, um, but anyway, I, you know, it is exciting to watch Charles try to pull that strategy out of his butt and, and a testament to him. He's putting that car in a position probably didn't have a business to be in. in. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. I think you're right. Out of the butt seems to be a, a good, good analogy yeah. He's, I mean, he's always got to, got to make something work. He's got to make those passes work quick uh, to make everything work. And uh, I'm sure, and, and he's, he's fun to watch and yeah. he does, he, he's got some great race craft and he does make it work half the time. Um, unless you're racing against Prez, I guess, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's Ferrari are just clawing their way back. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of getting some still getting points on the board with their chase with McLaren. I think it's been a hard, hard fought thing all year long. Um, but yeah, two, two different, two different races. Always. It seems yeah. those two drivers have sure. But this is a good battle and I'm not, I don't mean to patronize uh, you by saying this, but you know, you've got four drivers battling for the best of the rest, mm -hmm. you know, that's a really good race going on every single weekend. If you Absolutely. watch, Charles and Carlos versus Dan and Lando. This is a great battle. Yeah. It really is. And it's yeah. fun. It's been fun to watch. Um, all right, let's talk about AlphaTauri, Pierre Gasly and P9, Yuki Tsunoda P12. Very quiet race for Pierre, delivering again in an AlphaTauri. Uh, Pierre and Yuki both started on the soft compounds and ran in the top 10 early on. Both dropped down the field after their first stop, but Pierre Paul was able to get to fight back, you know, to get back up into the 10 top 10 claimed a point, um, important for them. And to be fair to him, he's putting a hell of a lot of pressure on Leclerc and just ran out of laps. I think he would have had him he had fresher tires, probably would have had Charles, uh, right. if, if he had a couple extra laps, but I, you know, again, Pierre quietly delivering another great race. Yeah, yeah, the strategy was weird. They they were mm -hmm. really yeah. With that first stop, they were really had to do a lot of work to get back up. And exactly, we know that uses equipment up and tires and everything like that just to make that work. Yeah. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure it was a a keen strategy for them. But um, yeah, Pierre's Pierre's always there fighting. He's he's consistently just making the most out of the car and and the opportunity. So Yuki yeah. obviously for p12 wasn't so bad i think he kind of inherited a couple of positions there on that last lap mind you yeah um, because of raikkonen and, and vettel but uh well yeah those penalties, two penalties yeah, yeah he was never gonna he was never gonna come back from that he just he's at least he's not at least this week anyway he didn't fly off the road or do anything <laughs> silly so although Wasn't... penalties like this is pretty silly also part of the learning experience right it is well yeah certainly the first time i think the second time starts to get a little yeah a little silly um, yeah 
Uh, let's see, Alpine, Fernando Alonso, P10, Esteban Ocon, a DNF, not really his fault. He finished his race on the first lap, was a meat sandwich. He was the meat in a Schumacher Giovinazzi sandwich. <laughs> and no one it, wants to have that. Nobody wants that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's one of those deals, Paul. It's it's hard yeah. to really blame anyone. It's three cars. He was in the middle, nowhere to go, damaged his front right suspension, ended his race, brought out the safety car in lap one. Um you know, hard to, yeah. to get too hard on Esteban on that. Yeah. But but for Alonzo, uh, still steaming about being balked in quality by Vettel, he actually wrung the neck of that Alpine, hunted George Russell down, <laughs> robbed the Williams driver of his first points in F1 for Williams yeah. by nipping him there in the waning laps uh, to claim P10. Uh, considering where they started and what happened to Ocon, Alonzo's 10th is probably about as good as you could hope for, Paul. Yeah, I mean, the battle with George was great. And luckily, there was a lot of coverage for it, right? I yeah, mean, they, I know it was only it. for 10th, yeah. and no one, you know, thinks Alonzo should be fighting out for one point. But at least he doesn't give up, right? No. Um, and, and I think it was, you know, those two get along. They've got, you know, you've seen pictures of them together and exchanging helmets. So I right. think they were both really enjoying it. But it was a real chess match. I mean, Alonzo has yeah. got a lot of tools in his box, you know, he does. and, and for George to be able to hold Alonzo off for that long was quite something, I think, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. And so I, th I thought it was a really, really super right. And when we're talking about, do you, you know, do you have to run someone off the road? Well, no, you don't because you saw what, how these guys raced. Yeah. Show. Yeah. That's exactly that right? right. Yeah. A lot of, a uh, lot of respect for both, both those drivers uh, yeah. respect each other quite a bit. And, yeah. uh, and Fernando felt horrible after he goes, oh, anybody, but George. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's, but he's never going to give it up, right? He's, he's not, not going to give it up. <laughs> George is going to have to earn it, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fernando, I'm sure he felt bad, but Fernando's not going to give the point up. If he's got it, if you know, it's, it's, it's there, he's going to take it. He's not built that way. No, yeah, he's not built sure. that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk about George and Williams. Uh, yeah. George Russell and P11 Latifi down in P15. George had a great weekend, Paul, mm -hmm. a great qualifying session, got into Q3 on merit. Fantastic effort by him uh, was heading for his first points finish he dropped down early on the race then fought back was getting in the points running in 10th uh, Alonzo got around stole that glory in the final laps and George you know uh, understood that but George and Williams both Paul seem to be making progress and that's great news uh, as George does even more to really steal that seat from Valtteri Bottas next year but apart from George, good news for the team and the car itself. Now, maybe mm -hmm. this is track specific, but there's probably going to be a couple other tracks that might suit this Williams car, and they're making some progress. I think that's good news. Yeah, I mean, as we've said for a long time, it's like, you know, the really good drivers can still do something with average cars. Yeah. Not all the time, not every race we can, but mm -hmm. when the car's a bit better, you know, they shine and that's exactly yeah. what russell does he's earned every right to be in that mercedes c i'm sorry yeah, I, I i i would i would be very upset if he doesn't get that ride oh my gosh next i'd year. be stunned yeah 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 if i can see george, george outside toto's house with his cup going along the fence you know just staring at yeah. it Cape fear like I'd, I'd be that mad <laughs> if i was him he's he's earned he's earned it man i mean he's oh he come does. on yeah, and everybody's kind of like, well, you free know, George, you, free George. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to, you know, do that because there's a real harmony and a balance with Valtteri mm. and Lewis, and you don't want to. Oh, the hell with Lewis! Come on, he's a seven-time champion. If he can't handle George, then what? Yeah, exactly. He's a seven-time champion. Yeah. Lewis is a hell of a driver. He's got it covered. He's a big boy. He's fine. Yeah, exactly. He is, and yeah. and, and and they and and Mercedes need to be thinking about their future, and their future exactly. is not. I'm sorry, it's just not Valtteri Bottas to lead the team. So. Right, and long-term, it's not Lewis. It is for two years. Yeah. They've just re-signed him for two years. That's awesome. Lewis yeah. is a, you know, a freaking seven-time champion. He's a hell of a driver. You yeah. know, one of the best of his generation. He's got this. Don't yeah. worry about little George coming in and upsetting Lewis. Lewis is fine. Yeah, and what Valtteri has had plenty of, plenty of time. opportunity to, to do what, something. But what you got to do is think beyond Lewis – and you got to think George, you got to think people that will take that mantle forward, you know, mm -hmm. and you got to get him. And what better understudy than Lewis Hamilton? 
right. for George to get in and run with Lewis? I mean, what better way to learn from a seven-time champion? Are you kidding me? Yeah, but George it's, is it, not going to play second fiddle to Lewis. He will not. He will <laughs> he's a not. nice guy, but he's... He will he's not, not going to do that. No, he will not, and and that's what that is the difference. Mm -hmm. That's what's you know when they get in there and they start trying to cram down on him, like they did with Valtteri. Uh, yeah, yeah, that dog don't hunt. Not with George. He's there to win. No. He's there to win championships. And I might add, so is Lewis Hamilton. Because mm -hmm. he didn't. They you know. Oh no, you know, gotta gotta stay behind Fernando. And Lewis said, Yeah. So well, the hell with that. <laughs> yeah. Ain't happening. Right. So. Uh, for Nick, uh, don't know what to tell you, buddy. Your car is running a lot better than P15, <laughs> but yeah. you're not. So it's unfortunate. Um, yeah. If you got George nipping at the points and you're languishing at the back, Nick's got to raise his game. Yep. All right, Aston Martin, uh, Lance Stroll. Gosh, going from what he did last week to this week in mm. P13, Sebastian Vettel, P17, not all of his own making. Lance and Seb started on the soft compounds, Paul. That was always going to be tough, as we saw with uh, with AlphaTauri. So this meant that they had that early stop. Now, they had clawed their way up, in fairness to both cars. They took advantage of that soft rubber, clawed their way up into the top 10, but then as the you know as the tires started wearing they started to fall back into the clutches the midfield by their first stop they were back in traffic that really made it difficult for lance to get back up and and perform like he did last weekend yep. that softer rubber i think was really a difficult right. tire for this car uh paul yeah. and then seb got punted by kimi on the last lap which is really odd yeah they definitely can't maximize the softer rubber i think that's that's definitely yeah. something about that but uh yeah it was it was a an average so-so race for these guys they had some flourishes in the race they but did ultimately yeah the strategy just put them in a place that they didn't have enough car to fight their way back through with yeah i'm wondering if they'd have been much better off going medium hard you know yeah i think for sure yeah because you know they ended up having to do a two-stopper i mean by the time they were gotten that traffic they said oh hell roll the dice and let's go two-stopper but right. and, yeah and we've we've seen they that car works better when it runs longer in that first stint mm -hmm. that's their strong point yeah um so that's they they need to just kind of focus on that i think yeah they, they have probably have been better off going hard hard medium yeah um so anyway uh let's see alfa romeo kimi raikin in p16 uh antonio giovanazzi down p14 antonio got caught up in that first lap incident with ocon again difficult to start pointing fingers at this point it was just one of those ocon sandwiches uh but that meant he had to, to box at the end of lap one that put him at the back and then he had to struggle all day to try to get back up to the points p14 is as good as he can do and what happened with kimi there he ran on the hards again like he did last week ran yeah. that long first stunt had the fresh tires at the end and then uh, you know he left a little bit of an opening vettel took it and then he just said well the hell with that and and it was i don't know what happened and i read yeah. his post-race com comments he's like oh you know i had the incident with vettel and that was the end of the race well, well but why well, I, all i can why see is did he have? didn't see him or or, or yeah. he lost his lost his width perception or something yeah. but definitely what he wasn't expecting there? vettel to dive on the inside so actually vettel had you know was charging up at that point and yeah. so was kimmy but yeah, I, I don't know what he did. He just misjudged it. Yeah. He either didn't see him or just misjudged, it, misjudged the width of the car, but it was a pretty bad error. Yeah, and, and you know, Vettel didn't go ballistic on Kimi either. You know, he just said, you know, it just, you know, kind of happened. And yeah. I don't think Kimi intended that, but, you know, it just kind of happened. Uh, and then finally, we're down with Gunther. <laughs> And Haas F1, Mick Schumacher, P18, Mazepan, and P19, Mick, once again, had the best of Nikita for the eighth time this year as the duo spent the day at the back of the grid trying to stay out of trouble. That's about all I have for them. Yep. Just rolling, letting the season roll on. That's it, man. Just rolling on. Yep. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I don't think they should have Gunther as the interview E because he's got nothing to say. What, what are you going to say? What are you gonna how are things say? going? And how do you even make up a question to ask him? So, how are things going back there? Yeah, yeah that's shit. Yeah, yeah, we're not really, we're just not even racing. We're just showing up to, so we don't lose our start money or whatever it is they get. So, yeah, it's just like, uh, okay, all right, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. They need to do Christian or where's Toto? Get Toto's butt on yeah, that thing. Yeah, get Toto back on there. Yeah. Yeah, come on. He's under pressure now. Maybe he doesn't yeah, want maybe. to. Yeah, maybe. All right. Let's do some awards. First, the move of the race. Woo! 
Get down. All right, move of the race, Paul. Who do you have? I'm going with Charles Leclerc for the mm. up and under on yeah. Perez. I thought that was that's how you get it done, my friend. That's exactly how you get yep. that done. Showed himself on the outside. The other car like goes in deep to try and cover that and then just jump to the inside. It was an awesome, awesome move. Totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the Dutch fans. Ooh. My gosh, that was impressive. Was it not? I thought they were McLaren fans. <laughs> I thought Lando kept great. saying it was McLaren fans. Yeah, I was, was like, hilarious. oh, it's good to see all that orange for <laughs> McLaren. It was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My gosh, that, you know, it was great. 132,000 people back at this race. Mm -hmm. Great to see all the great fans back at a race. Um, and then all of that sea of orange for Max is just mm -hmm. impressive as hell. It's just super impressive to see. Yep. And you could hear them no matter whose mic was hot during the broadcast. You know, they're down on Christian the pit wall. You can hear them in the back. You know, he's yeah. in the pit, you know, uh, is amazing. You could hear him everywhere. It was just yeah, amazing. and he delivered. Wait till he go to Zandvoort. Oh, my gosh. That's yes. going to be nuts, That'll right? be insane. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. So the next uh, award is always Donkey of the Race. Woo! We'll do it live. This is for. All right, Paul, Who Donkey of the Race. Be? Mm. Could it be? Uh, Perez. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to give it to the stewards. Oh, you're going to give it to Derek Warwick. I uh, say so he was the next one in line. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give it to the stewards. Good. good grief. Come on. Yeah. He had 11 people that had to go see Principal Warwick and, you know, <laughs> get their hands slapped, get their paddling. Uh, you know, come on, man. And now everybody's got, so they handed out, I don't know, 20, 19 points, uh, penalty points on license this weekend. Yeah. So, I, I think uh, the penalty point thing, I'm just like, come on. They got to figure that, that not, out. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't. The penalty points is a little, a little over the top. Yeah. Agreed. All right. And then finally, driver the race. <laughs> Good God. Oh, yeah, Paul. Driver the race. Who'd gotta you give it, it to? to? Gotta give it to Lando, man. Absolutely. I, mean, I know Max had, a, man, Max had a great car and a great drive, flawless drive, but Lando, oh, yeah. once again, rah, yeah, absolutely. Getting yeah. In the top three. Yeah. I mean, certainly like, you know, there's been many times when Lewis just won from the, you know, from the lights out and cruised to victory and I didn't give him a, a drive of the race and it was a brilliant mm -hmm. drive, but so mm -hmm. it was Max's, but boy, drive of the race for me, it gotta be Lando qualifying yep. second, getting up, battling, getting around Lewis, albeit a damaged car, then yeah. really threatening. He was within a second of uh Valtteri who looked like he might, uh, threatened Valtteri. So running with the leaders at this race, impressive as hell. And, Very much. Uh, and it's great. All right, let's do some mailbag. Woo. You've got mail. All right, so Mr. Jury was asking about the whole, uh, you know, the conflicting rules about the Austrian Grand Prix. You're allowed to hold your racing line. It, you know, uh, it seems some races, the commentators are all about leaving a car's width and other times they'll hold the racing line and no one can decide. And hopefully our conversation at the beginning of this podcast kind of answered that. I think a lot right. of this, I don't want to rehash that and go through it again, but uh, just rewind, listen to the beginning of the podcast because I think we, <laughs> we address that. Hopefully we did. If we didn't go to the mailbag, let us know uh, what you're thinking there. Uh, but I think... Yeah. There's going to be think, a lot of differing opinions. I, I yeah. Get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is. Um, certainly, if you're watching the broadcast, uh, Sky Sports, they had a lot of uh, different opinions. Uh, I think I've read a lot of F1 journalists, uh, some of them very broad opinions. Well, if you go to the outside, it's a low percentage pass and you get what you, what you pay for. Um, I think Paul, you know, really tried to parse it out a little better than that in the sense of saying a lot of it depends on when you present yourself and mm -hmm. where you're at. It's, it's, it's based on entering the corner, based on exiting the corner. Um, there's just a lot of permutations to keep and consider. One thing I will say, Paul, um, to his point here, um, and you brought it up, and Grace and I have talked about this in the past quite a bit, you can't penalize outcomes. Right. Penalizing outcomes doesn't work. You have to either be consistent and penalize the action, regardless of the outcome, mm -hmm. or don't. 
But yeah. if it, if if the outcome is, oh man, he ran wide, and that's going to make the race uh, less exciting, we need to penalize that. You can't do that crap. Right. They've either got to be penalties for everyone, or they're penalties for no one. But that's why you're seeing the inconsistency because you're like, oh crap, that was a terrible outcome. They <laughs> deserve a penalty. No, it doesn't work that way. That's not what we wanted to see. No. Yeah. That's not what I wanted for this race. We're going to penalize them. You can't do that crap. No. All right. So stop it. All right. Shumi in Toronto has this question for you, Paul. I've noticed mm-hmm. that all the teams cover their cars with a car cover while the cars sit in the garage overnight. Is this mandated by the FIA? No, there was a strict curfew that the cars can't be worked on after hours and security cameras always uh, running uh, to enforce this. Are these cars car covers part of that? Uh, it's hard to believe that they're simply dust covers. What do you think? If memory serves correctly, I thought, and I could be confusing the cover over the gearbox and engine mm-hmm. when they're in transport. I think there is an FIA seal there on is, those. Yeah. And yeah. you can't break that seal without getting a penalty. I don't recall if the total car cover at the end of the evening has an FIA safety seal on that or not. Yeah, I th- definitely. If you're in park for May conditions, like between qualifying and yeah. the race, there is absolutely a cover and a seal, and you can't change anything on the car without asking permission for this or that. Right. Um, and I think, you know, there's also limitations on wh- when you can work on the car, right? When that right. ends, you know, once again, I'm sure that there's that cover is used for that purpose also. And if you need to do something else, you have to ask permission. And so you have to go through the the right deal so yeah uh, my hunch is yeah. uh my hunch is that they do seal them up in the cover and and put a seal on it um, yeah because it also protects them from other teams coming in and right around my, my dad my dad was telling me a story the other day and they were this is imsa in in the in the 80s right and um they were racing a porsche and there was a lot of other people racing Porsches as well and this was the Moby Dick car at Daytona and he says yeah they, they were left for the evening and then my dad came back for some something and then he walks in the garage and he sees these two legs <laughs> underneath the car <laughs> and he yanks the person out and it's uh, John Paul Senior so if anyone that knows IMSA they know John Paul Senior John Paul Junior was a good friend of mine and sadly died recently um but uh yeah so there was a lot of that going on in between <laughs> in the night and I, I don't know what he was doing he was either trying to break something and make or he was just trying to see something under there but either way but that yanked him out and threw him out of the garage so <laughs> it, it helps out with that too <laughs> he's over there with a razor blade cutting just a little cut in the brake line yeah know? yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah oh boy that's good news all right well that does it for this podcast you've got a reprieve paul it's a couple of weeks until <sighs> uh silverstone so you're off duty we'll get grace back next week and start talking nonsense about news in formula <laughs> one but in the meantime stop by the website theparkforme.com share your opinion do it with decorum civility if you like the podcast go over to itunes and give us some love give us a good uh a good rating over there also a huge thank you to our patreon supporters who are, are out there and listening and watching and we could not do this without you we would not do this podcast without you it's been 16 years now paul that Oof. we've been covering formula That's one crazy. um and we could not do it uh without our patreon supporters at all so anyway thank you so much i'm incredibly grateful to, for all of your support and for all of the use uh supporting us uh on those monthly paypal uh, uh support as well all of you uh thank you so much for your support until the next time paul it's been great congratulations on the two podium results at the Glen. that's exciting thank your you. next race is when lime rock in two weeks lime rock in two weeks emsa be looking for the number three aston martin that is where paul is so uh you can watch that at lime rock for the harder racing team number 23 led by your friend and all around swell guy ian james that's right good old friend decades old friend decades old friend ian james awesome guy so anyway all right folks until that time this is todd aka negative camera saying so long that's it man game over man it's game over